Hi, I'm Jim Butte. I'm a hard luck nerd, uh, and this is my take on the Imperial Japanese Navy's aircraft carrier Kaga. Um, historically, operationally, Kaga's famous. Uh, she was one of the ships that was in the strike force that attacked Pearl Harbor and brought the United States into World War II. And then we returned the favor at the Battle of Midway, and uh, American dive bombers uh, effectively sunk her at the Battle of Midway. Um, that's the operation side. Uh, as a ship, she's a really interesting ship. She was an aircraft carrier back in the days before we knew how to build aircraft carriers. So navies would take existing ships and they would modify them and experiment and figure out how to make them aircraft carriers. Uh, so Kaga herself, in her case, she was laid down as a battleship in the 1920s. Uh, and if you look at her waterline, that's what you're going to see. It's, a, it's an old-timey 1920s battleship. And in fact, back aft, She's got their, her old battleship armament down there. She's got those great big 8-inch guns in those old-timey casements. Uh, so, and then they experimented, so they put a great big massive steel box on top of that battleship hull uh, to be the hangar. And then on top of that, they put the flight deck, and, and that was to operate the aircraft. Um, to support it uh, up front, she's got these massive struts that hold the flight deck up above the forecastle, and that gave them room to, to have a flight deck that was long and, and supported up there. And then back aft, same thing. She's got these massive struts, and so she's got a, a huge boat deck because she carries a flotilla of small boats. She's got a you know motor whale boats, gigs, barges, sampans, and paint punts. But she's got a, she's got more boats than airplanes on this thing. Um, then the flight deck, uh, and that's the business end. Uh, she's got three elevators uh, that, that uh, bring the, uh, the aircraft up and down from the hangar. We've, we've motorized the hangars in this build, and I'll get it wrong, I'm sure. Yep, there we go. They're a little touchy, but for the show, they, they go up and down, uh, and that's how they would get the aircraft from the flight deck to the hangar. Um, and again, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old joke. I'm sorry. It's an Imperial carrier. There are TIE fighters down in the hangar, and I'm sorry about that. I apologize. Um, the flight deck, again, all the arresting gear it worked out pretty well with the Lego strings. They turned out to be about the right length. I could, I could fudge a little and make them the arresting gear that would catch the airplanes when they landed. Um, the air wing, uh, the scale was determined by these zeros. I, I, my friends and I, we made a Japanese zero that kind of was about right, and uh, we just scaled up for that. Um, and then the attack aircraft, the, the valves and the Kate bombers back here. Uh, this is one of the great things about being in a lug. I was, I was uh, whining that I couldn't find these green cones. And my friend in the lug, Dan, he said, hey, no, I've got them. There's these little Christmas trees. Here, I got half a dozen of them because he's you know, collecting them for the kids in his church. So, yeah, it, if you're in a lug, you'll get ideas and you'll get the parts you need um, sometimes. Yeah, is it difficult to build planes at that scale while capturing kind of the essential elements of them, making them recognizable still? Well, yeah, actually, exactly. In fact, I've got a few props over here. Uh, this was one of my first mocks that I brought to a brick fair. There's these really tiny Zero and Kate. That's something my son and I did. We, it was about a two-foot version of this ship. And uh, building those planes at that scale, it's impossible. They, they're pretty gross unless you stand way back. These are about the right size where they, yeah, you can start to recognize them as a zero if you've got a willing mind kind of a thing. So, yes, it's very hard. <laughs> but anyways, um, what else would you like? Um, the very tiny island that they had, um, lots and lots of these little anti-aircraft guns. Uh, they've, they've got the, the smaller ones, 25 millimeter. They had the problem of exhaust gases. They've got this massive funnel down here spewing out all the, 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 the petroleum exhaust back here. So these, these two turrets behind that, they had to encase to, to keep from gassing out the crews. Um, that's about it operationally and about the ship. Um, it's not built, again, so that you get uh, that, that sideways look for the planked decks. Uh, this is, again, uh, recycled planked deck from the last model I made. And, uh, and again, the sideways uh, building of the, the, the bulkheads, you can get lucky sometimes, and you get ladders that work out good and, and, and other elements. So works out pretty good going sideways. Um, I love the overall look of this ship, and you explained it at the beginning uh, about how they would just like put the deck on top of existing ships already. I mean, it's almost like a sci-fi type of thing when you're looking at these just because it's like a conglomeration of so many different elements. Oh, that's it, exactly. It was all experimentation and, and just trying to, in fact, there were, there were naval treaties and, and, and laws at work that would limit them for what they'd do, so you can research that offline uh, for your fans. But there's a lot of reasons that they did all those weird things to conglomerate these things into aircraft carriers. Yeah. So then bringing this to a show, what is that uh, experience like for you? Because this is, how, how long is this build? Uh, it's about an eight and a half footer. And, and again, anytime you build anything this big, uh, you've got to build it modularly. So the hull itself is in four sections. 
um, and that breaks into nice easy pieces. And then the, the flight deck is three sections. I'll take one of those off for you and show that in a minute. Uh, each of the elevators is a module because I knew they were going to be finicky and I had to, I'd be reworking and reworking those so they're made to come out. And then there's a bunch of just little goofy things like these individual turrets will pop off and the, the island itself pops off and, and things like that. So uh, a whole bin full of little bits that go into it. Uh, so there's a bin full of miscellaneous, three pieces of flight deck and then four pieces of hull. And that's about it. You want to take a look inside? Yeah, for sure. Let's check it out. You may want to pause here. I'll take just a few minutes to mm -hmm. drop a few things off the edge of here. Start to learn a thing or two about how to do this and, and make it so that you can do this in sort of real time. Yeah. Uh, but so, and uh, you can see all the gross stuff inside too. So that's about, you know, one third of the flight deck and, and that's how it works. And again, inside, uh, it's, a, it's a fully furnished hangar deck and anybody who builds a big mock like this, you know, like the castle guys, you, know, you see this great outside and there's an interior that nobody's gonna see unless you guys show up with your camera and now you can see inside. And the elevators themselves tried to make them a little modular. Again, just simple power functions and a cord that goes down there and my cord is stretched tight so I can't really pull it out any farther than that, sorry. But that was so that I could mess with that, and you can see there's a, there's a whole bunch of Technic uh, buffoonery going on under the hood there, underneath that, to, to make that plate go up and down. Again, another good thing being in a lug, I've got some mechanical geniuses that, that are in my club that give me some pointers and ideas on, on how to make that work. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Actually, you get a better view of their boat deck back there. There's all kinds of small craft and, and all that stuff. And again, the sideways technique of uh, getting a smooth hull shape by, by going one small piece at a time with a plate and then just bend it a little and move to the next plate and bend it a little, and you get a smooth hull form. That's one thing I love about your builds is the movement that you incorporate in them, like uh, with the, the elevators that go up and down there. So when you know you're going to have that movement, is that something you kind of build the rest of the build around and making sure you can fit wires and all of those moving elements inside the build? Bingo. You, you know it exactly. You've probably done it yourself by asking that question. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes it a whole lot harder, and you have to plan to have wireways and things like that, and, and you've got to figure out uh, restrictions. In fact, that front elevator was just murderous because the water line comes in so, so narrow. There wasn't room for me and my motor to be underneath that elevator, so I had to get kind of clever with things like that. But, yeah, it shapes the whole way you put it together. Thank you. And as you mentioned in the beginning, this is a Japanese uh, aircraft carrier. So what was the research process like? Is it easy to find sort of like blueprints or plans for how this was laid out and how this came together? Uh, I, I got really lucky. In fact, my wife's on to me. She knows when I ask for a plastic model for Christmas, I'm never going to build that model. I'm going to use that model to discipline drawings to make a, a, a big Lego mock out of it. And then I lucked out. I found a, a, a book that had some good pictures. And um, actually, I... I transpose those pictures and those models and you've asked about the design process before and I realize I've, I've answered you wrong. First thing I'll do is I'll swipe a piece of parchment paper from the pantry <laughs> and I will lay out the, the the kind of the waterline view and this was so foreign to me and so weird and there's so many weird shapes on how this is built. I'll just sketch out okay here's where the waterline is, here's where the flight deck is and then I'll build on top of this and that'll keep me from getting too far out of whack with the scale uh, for, for how she builds it. So. That's a better answer for the question you've asked me a couple times about how I design these things. Yeah, and I think that's something similar like Brickmania does with some of their giant ships. They'll lay out paper plans like that and build on top of it. I can only imagine what, what those guys do at their scale is, is an order of magnitude worse than what i got to deal with. So I'm sure they, they've, they've got to know what they're doing for that. Yep. Yeah, it's really incredible stuff. So I'm sure there's always more inspiration for, for ships or military-related builds uh, for you. So do you have plans for anything coming up in the future? <laughs> Another good question. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the luckiest guy I know. Uh, local museum does a Lego shipbuilding show. It's brilliant that the Hampton Roads Naval Museum does. Uh, thousands of kids and families, and they just love it. So every year we get to make some new, big, goofy historical ship. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow night we're taking this apart and throwing it in bins, and it'll be a destroyer next time you see it if you, if you come to the next show. Um, but... Actually, I'm running out of ships on my, my Bricket list, so I'm going to take advantage of you and your, your many viewers. We can reach thousands with you guys, and thank you for this. If you got anything, you know, throw it in the comments. If you want to see something, I'd be happy to take requests because I'm running out of stuff that I want to do. So if there's something interesting, please put it in the comments. There we go. I love it. So, yeah, anyone watching this video, put your recommendations down below, and we'll see what you come up with for the next convention. I can only do one a year, so it might take me a while. But, yeah, <laughs> I'm out of my own ideas. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for bringing this out to the show. It's fantastic. I always appreciate it. No, thank you very much.